In this video we're going to look at Cartoon Animator 5.2's new motion path animation tool and specifically I'm going to demonstrate how to use the tool to recreate an old style map that you might see in an adventure movie where they depict an airplane or a ship traveling from one country to another sort of moving along the map with a nice dotted line following behind it. If you want to learn how motion path animation works in Cartoon Animator 5.2 uh, there is a very good official video for it over in the Learning Center which you can get to by hitting on Learn Tutorials and that will take you to the Learning Center for Cartoon Animator and over here Object Animations and you're looking for this video with the ship on it here just click on that and that will get you to this video it's also on the Real Illusion YouTube channel. I think this does an excellent job of explaining path animation. It's pretty clear, straightforward, and I really don't have a lot I can add to it. But you'll notice here, even on the thumbnail, there's this example of a ship following a path around a map. And if we go back to the product page, you'll see they also feature it in the header of this page. And this is what it looks like. If we scroll down to the bottom, they've got the actual animation of it down here. I run that. You see there's this ship sailing around the map with this red line following it as it moves along. And in the official video, they don't actually show you how they do this. And so that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. Uh, it's actually not as straightforward as you would have thought, and it took me quite a while to work out how to do this too. So what we'll do is we'll get out of this, go into Cartoon Animator where I've already set up a map. This is just a free SVG map that I got from one of the free image sites. And if we zoom in on it, I've got a ship here, which I'll show you. We'll just focus on that. I've got this ship that I got from the same site. It's just an SVG ship that I've imported as a prop. And then we've got our X marks the spot over here. So the way we're going to do this to get started is I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the map. And what we're going to do is create a path that goes from the ship to our spot down here. Now if you haven't actually used the tool or watched the video to see how this works, I'll take you through the steps for this particular project. So we've got this tool here which is the Create Path tool. You just click on that and immediately we've got this dot waiting to be positioned somewhere. So we can just click where we want that to start. And I'm going to start it from here. And then we just click all the various points. And if we want to do a curved point, we click and drag and it'll bring out curves like so. So I'm going to do curves going down around here. I'm not going to make this too long because otherwise this will be a fairly long process video. Now to stop adding points you just click your last point and then right click with the mouse and that will end making your path. And you'll see we've got this little path properties box has come up. We can still edit this path, we can add points to it. So if I wanted to add an extra point, I can click anywhere on the line that will add an extra point to the path. Or if I want to add points to the end, you can click on the end and then keep going again, adding more points, and then right click to stop. I'm going to undo those last couple of points. I don't want to add extra points. And this one here where we don't have the curve, if I right click on that, see I can change it between Bezier, Linear and Smooth. And we can also unify the control handles, which if I go to Smooth, it doesn't look like anything's happened, but it's basically changed it so that we've got these handles on both sides. If I right click and then go to Unify, now when I move one of these, the other one will move with it. So we get this nice even curve. And if we don't want that them unified, we can break the handles. And now we can get our sharp points back. I do want them unified, so there we go. And we're going to maybe do that there. Smooth that out, smooth on that one maybe, and that looks pretty good. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach my ship to that path. We just select the ship, right click, do pick path, and we can just click anywhere on this path, it doesn't matter at this point, and the ship will immediately jump there. 
And now when we do go into the path properties, you see we've got a whole load more properties here for the sailing ship. See it's object sailing ship that's selected. And if we use this progression slider here, you see we can move the ship anywhere around on the path. Now doing this at the moment is not creating any key frames because I'm on frame zero. But if I open up the timeline, and move around. You'll see on the path progress thing we've just created a keyframe there and now if I move this around the ship's going to move to that point. So keep that in mind if you want to experiment with a path without creating keyframes you want to be on frame zero. I'm going to undo that for the minute and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my X marks the spot to the end of the path. I'm going to add that to the path as well and you'll see why I did that a bit later but I want that to be on the end of the path over there. And we'll close things up. So now what we're going to do is make the ship travel to the end of its path. So I'm going to say do that over say 120 frames. Select the ship, properties, and we want the ship to follow the path and you can see here with this X thing we can decide which side of the line we want it on. Uh, with X it's on the top, basically based on coordinates. If we go minus X it'll be underneath the line. Y, turn the ship on the Y coordinate and minus Y the other way. But I want it to face that way so I'm going to flip it first then move it to the end of the path and that gives us a keyframe at frame 150. I'm just going to move in my little slider down here so that it comes in at the bottom and we've got the end of my animation. So now if I go back to the beginning, hit play, we've got our ship sailing around into port and it's looping around because I've got loop on, take looping off. And what we want to happen is when it gets to port uh, we want this cross to appear. So at the start of the animation, I'm going to turn the cross off. And when we get to the end, notice the ship flips around there. Don't want it to flip. So at that point, when it flips, I'm going to flip it back. At this point, go in, select my cross, and make it turn on. And I might even turn my ship at that point. And turn it at that point. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. So next we're going to do our dotted line. And I'm going to do that by creating my dotted line from a rectangle shape. It comes free with Cartoon Animator. Do one of these, this square here. Just bring that onto the stage. And we'll change its colour to a nice red colour. So, and we'll just shrink it down. Good size. Backwards one, so it's behind the ship. And we're going to make that a little smaller. Then I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, so that we can sort of see what we're doing. I'm not going to make this too small, but now that I've got it, what we're going to do is attach that to the path as well. So we're going to go right click, path, pick path, and making sure we're on frame zero still, I'm going to pick the same path. And then we're going to open up the path properties, and you'll see this properties is now for the square, because that's what's selected, and we want that to go right at the beginning, and we want that to follow the path as well, so you'll see that when I move it, that's now going to follow the path as it moves along. Now we don't want the actual dotted line to move along the path like the ship. So we don't want the dotted line to be moving with the ship. We just want the dotted lines to appear behind the ship as it moves, sort of following this path. And what I discovered, if we go into the scene, so we've got the square selected here under a prop. And because it's attached to a path, 
If I duplicate this prop now, uh, the prop will be duplicated, but the path won't. It'll stay on the same path and it'll be attached and we'll be able to move it around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the ship so you can see what's going on. So I'll just turn the ship off, select my square and we'll hit the duplicate button up here. And it looks like nothing has happened, but over in the scene menu here, you'll see we've got square and square zero. Now if I use the progression slider on the path properties, because square zero is now set, we can move that along the line and put it roughly where we think it should go. And then if I do this again, you see now we've got I've duplicated it again, now it's square zero and square one. And now this is path properties for square one. You notice the path, we've still got just the one path. It's only the actual prop that duplicated. So I can now move that along my next position. And then we just duplicate it again. Move it to the next position, duplicate, move to the next position. You see we're getting more squares building up here. Duplicate move it to the next position. Now I'm going to go through and do this for the entire scene. So I'm just going to turn that off, zoom out. So just keep in mind what I was doing. I'm going to select the last square that I had, open up the path properties. I'm just going to duplicate, move it along. I'm going to speed up the footage till we get to the end and I have my dotted line. So let's just get on with it. There we go, that's my dotted line. You notice all of that was done on frame zero. I haven't moved off of that frame. We've got the whole line going all the way. Uh, I've got all these squares up to square 20. And if I turn my ship back on, you see here, ship will still sail and none of those things are doing anything. They're just there at the moment. You'll notice the ship's behind each one of those at the moment. That's because they're been created after the ship. If I wanted to, uh, I could move the ship forward on the z-axis, but it doesn't really matter since the ship is going to be moving forward and these things are going to be appearing behind it. So at this point, that doesn't really matter. So the next thing we want to do is make uh, my dotted lines appear behind the ship as it's moving rather than being there all the time. To do that, we simply start on frame one and we select all of my dotted lines in the scene manager. The easiest way to select them all is just select the top one, hold down the shift key, select the bottom one and we'll just turn them off so you can't see them. Now we just select the first one and start advancing through the frames on the timeline until there's enough space for the first line to appear and we just make sure the first line's selected, turn it back on. Advance the ship a bit more, we've got enough space for the next line, select that one, turn it on. Again, we just keep doing this, select the next dotted line, turn it on, select the next one, and the next one, make that visible, make the next one visible, and I'm just going to go through and do the whole row. I think you get the idea, just move the ship a few frames forward, select the next one, turn it on. And there you go, that's the whole line done. So if we go back to the start of the animation now and press play, there we have our ship and its dotted line following it along. Now you might be thinking like, well, what was the point of putting all those dots on the path when they're not moving? You could have just done that by without the path, but this is what is really good about it. So now that you've got that, say you wanted to adjust where the ship was going to actually go to on your map, so you didn't get quite the right location. We can now select the path, path properties, and let's say we wanted the ship to go maybe a little bit more out here, and maybe we want that point there to be a curve. And you'll see now, when I run the animation, everything just moves quite nicely. I can edit it around. And I will point out that you can move, make this line longer if you wanted to. You can add points to it. And But what will happen is these lines will progressively get further apart. 
as they space themselves out across the line. So if you did want to do something dramatically different, you would have to make a completely different location. So let's say you want it to go right up there. You'll notice the lines are spacing themselves out. So I take my ship up there. But you'll see all the animation is still working and it all works perfectly fine. So there you go, that's how you make a path with a ship or an aeroplane showing their sort of journey on a map using that sort of dotted line technique that you see in sort of adventure movies and those kinds of things. I hope you found that demonstration useful. It actually took me quite a bit of time to work out how to do that. Uh, it's not immediately obvious that you can do this kind of thing with the path tool and for a little while there I wasn't even sure it was possible at all but thankfully it is and I was able to work it out and show you how to do it in this video. So hopefully you'll find that useful for an animation in the future and I'll leave it there until next time. Bye for now.